Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, I'm going to be joined by my good friend Ash, who runs the YouTube channel Ash Rage Shadow Legends. I'll put a link down below to check out his stuff already, but I'm sure you already know who Ash is. He's one of the most prominent content creators in Rage Shadow Legends, so I'm excited to have a discussion with him. And today, we're going to be talking about the Shadowkin Crypt and what the best possible team to build is going to be for the Shadowkin Crypt, and then we'll kind of compare notes and see where we agree and disagree. So you'll be able to see uh, my team right at the gate, right when the video starts, and then we'll see what Ash does, and then we'll go ahead and collaborate and, and talk about our thought process when putting together the best possible team for Shadowkin as we get really close to people hitting stage 21 of the Shadowkin Crypt. So let's get into it. Alrighty, and now joined by uh, Ash himself. How you doing, brother? Chosen, what's up, man? I'm doing great, bro. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to talk some Shadowkin, man. That's right. We're gonna. Uh, I figure we're, we're we're hitting that point where the uh, people are gonna start hitting stage 21 of the Shadowkin faction wars in the live game, and thought it'd be fun to just talk about what we're thinking in terms of the best possible shadowkin team so the way i do this is i lay out for the viewer that uh you know ash can't see what i wrote right here that i'm pointing at for the viewer uh and I, that's the best team i think is possible to build uh fully uh you know just dis d disclaimer there's gonna be like op legendaries and stuff we'll, we'll, we'll talk about budget options as well maybe if we get to it but anyway that's the best team possible that i think to build and then ash is gonna list his best possible team and we'll see where we agree and disagree Hey, man, I like this game. I like this game, Chosen. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, how I do my collabs. I just did one like this kind of with Cold Brew, talking about Doom Tower bosses and stuff. So we'll see if uh, we'll is, see if we uh, align or if we disagree a lot. <laughs> this is fun. So do I just give you my team? <laughs> yeah, start with uh, start with the leader. Uh, like who you'd put as like the aura and kind of the lead of the team. Sure, sure, sure. So let me think about my auras here. I will use, okay, that doesn't have it. That doesn't have it. That doesn't have it. Oh my God, I'm going to need a good aura here, man. That's, that's what, okay, you know, no, I lied. I'm going to, my aura lead and my only support champion, I want to say, maybe not, is going to be Rio Bone Spear, man. Uh, All so right. the thing is here, Chosen, is I'm going for the strategy of I have all the champions. This is the best possible team. And I don't think that I need a lot of support here. So I want to go for damage. Uh, but Rio's going to be like hopefully carrying my team in terms of support. Okay, cool. Sounds okay. good. And then right. uh, and then who you uh, who you going to start using after that? And at 42% attack in Faction Wars too, bro. That's like pretty it is a It is a Good lot. Job. And it would, and for those people that started playing uh, during the Ninja promotion, Ninja scales really crazy with attack. So that'd be a good, yeah. uh, be a good RI to work with him as well. Woo! Okay, so next up is going to be my debuffer. That's going to be Genzin. Genzin. Okay. Uh, so he's turn meter filling himself all over the place. I like that. You know, doing some damage as well. He's like a energizer bunny chosen. Like he's he's this dude's like a, a maniac. So, uh, overall, not my favorite legendary debuffer in the game, but for Shadowkin, I think he's a uh, he's a great choice if I do say so myself. And then we have uh, Ninja, of course, the damage dealing maniac. Uh, how could I not have Ninja on the squad? So between Genzin and Ninja, I feel like, man, I'm already off to an amazing start here on damage. And then the obvious, probably should have been the first, you know, mentioned, but she's not an aura, is Lady Kimmy, man. Like, Lady Kimmy is just insane. She's going to bring the decreased speed, a little bit of control there, uh, decreased accuracy, uh, giving a little bit of time for uh, Rio to come in and heal my team. I'm going to have increased accuracy, increased speed as well. Block buffs on the enemies. Oh, my God, dude. So, yeah, Lady Kimmy is going to be uh, a no-brainer. So now I've got Lady Kimmy. I've got Ninja. I've got Rio lead. I've got Genzin. Honestly, if I was just trying to make, like, the most OP team I could possibly make, and, and it wasn't for Faction Wars, I would add Kyoku to the team. Uh, okay. However, I think with those four champions... I don't need a Kyo. I don't need like an, um, an amazing tank, one of the best in the game. I think I can just put more damage on that team, and they're still going to stay alive no matter what with Rio on the squad and Lady Kimmy supporting, etc. So instead, I'm actually going to go with, I know you don't have her on your list, but I'm actually going to go with Abaro, who I think would be the best PvE damage dealer out of all the epics. Uh, but I'm not sure if she would out-damage Jintoro. So... It's tough to say. I'm going to go with... I would probably try to play it safe with Jintoro first. Because stealing all tur turn meter against the red boss is great to have. And there's a lot of damage on Jintoro, you know, to begin with. 
Uh, but I think, my gut tells me that crazy as it sounds, a borrow might be able to outdamage him. No, eh, eh. Sorry, I'm like rambling. My I, head think, I think in a single video, target Justin. context, maybe, maybe. Yeah, it's it's tough to say. I guess I'm just gonna play it safe and just go with Jintoro. Uh, so what? Uh, how did I do, Chosen? Yeah, no problem. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go off camera for like ten seconds, and I'm gonna send you my list, and then we'll kind of talk about how we compare. I love it. I love it. Alrighty, I, I, and now wow, I am back. Dude. So so, what's your first thought when you see uh, when you see my list here? My first thought is like props to you for going a little bit outside the box with Jingwan in there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was just telling you off air that boy, that guy has a freaky hand on the back of his shield that looks so cool, by the way, you know? Uh, but so first thought is, wow, Jingwan, that's cool. Uh, I want to look more at him and where, how he fits in the team. My second thought is, well, the only other difference is Kaioku versus Genzin. So the real question here is, do you have an AOE decrease defense? Does Jingwan do that? Or are you just running with Lady Kimmy uh, and hoping that Ninja can just DPS everybody down? Yeah, um, so I was really prioritizing putting yourself in a good position to three star the uh, the, the boss. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Jingwan is going to bring the HP aura, and it, it's going to make my continuous heals pop off even harder from Riho and make all my support abilities kind of do that much more. And he's also going to lower the crit damage, which is one of the highest scaling things. So it's going to make the boss hit a lot less hard. So it's going to make it a lot easier to three-star the content. When you pair that with the ally protect of Kyoku, I basically, there's no way the boss is going to be able to kill oh, my team. Yeah, you're living like forever. Yeah. I feel like it all comes in. Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. But I feel like our team difference is so we both have Ryo, Kimmy, and Ninja, right? So I feel like... It's going to come down to, is my team going to be able to three-star? If they can, it's going to be a way faster team because it's just more damage. If they can't, yeah. then I'm screwed, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and the and the way I was putting it together was uh, was really focusing on making sure I can three-star the, the content. I I can, though. You, you know were thinking about kind of the best team in general for, for you know, farming it during CBC and clearing it. So I think... I think I like your team too. I think we both had a slightly different thought process, but I think uh, I think yeah, I think your team definitely would like clear the content faster for sure. That that's true, but I like where your head was at though too. Like shame on me for not actually thinking about you know completing it. You know, uh, but my question to you, chosen, is: Do you think my team, as constituted, can can three star? Um, I, I, I the the gear threshold for your team would be a, would be a lot higher. Um, yep. But yeah, I think I think with brute force, good RNG. Uh, if you can get the if you can get the attacks of the boss to go on the right champion, it could. It would not. It probably wouldn't be a hundred percent unless you had insane gear. Uh, but because you don't have, well, like we already a, have every legendary chosen. So yeah. we're gonna say we have we have uh, insane gear. But yeah. I hear you, man. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try with this squad. I actually have them. So I'm gonna. See oh, you actually have all those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a dirty pay to win. You know? Jeez. Uh, I got lucky with my uh, with my Shadowkins. The only guy I actually don't have is Jingwan. Uh, oh wow. So, but what I what I would do though is if my team was not able to do it, I would just sub out Jintoro for uh, Kyoku and then see you later. You know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kyoku is an amazing tank. tank. So good, you know. So. Gosh, well, I, like I uh, I'm missing. I only have Lady Kimmy, Ninja Yoshi, and Gamoran. That like that's it. Only. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of Gamoran? Because I was a little. I'm not gonna lie, man. Not a trash champion, but I was a little underwhelmed. Did you build him? Um, I haven't built him yet. I'm gonna wait for like a CVC and see if I need him for for Shadowkin. I wish he had a way to revive. Um, but I I guarantee you. He doesn't really have a way to revive. Um, his his kind of uh, his A three is kind of wonky here. Um, so I think what Plarium is gonna do is they're gonna have like a fusion event for a Shadowkin reviver because we don't even really have one. So they're probably gonna wait uh, for people to struggle a little bit with three starring Shadowkin, and then I bet you they come down the road and they slam us with a uh, with a Shadowkin reviver for a hyped up fusion event or something. Okay, I like that. He does have that soul charge passive. You see that? Yeah, and, and, like, I mean, it's not a reliable revive. Yeah, because like know? when you're yeah. fighting the boss, like you're not gonna. Yeah, yeah you're not even you're not even gonna be able to proc that. Which which is why I said he's kind of not a reviver, but he's got no. a kind of a wonky kit. So I don't know. I mean, he's so situational. He's hard to get value out of on full auto, which 99% of this game is played on full auto. So 
Yeah. yeah, I think he could use a little yeah. bit of a adjustment, but I, I like where their head was at and trying cool things with him. Yeah, me too. Me too. Like, at least he's unique in, in I feel like he's a champion that if you had pulled him, you'd always want to hang on to him because there could be a use of a, a funky use for him in some kind of weird team in some uh, some point in the future. Uh, neither of us included any epics. Uh, it shows it. Do you have any? Uh, if you had to add one, like who would you add? I have a favorite. I, it would probably be Taraji because uh, Taraji, yeah. he's going to lower the attack of the boss. I actually thought about putting him in, but uh, Rio already has decreased attack. If Riho did not have decreased attack, I honestly might have uh, if my priority was three-starring him. Uh, but Taraji is going to also place the shield, which is incredible for Faction Wars, especially when you're trying to three-star. So, yeah, I would definitely go with Taraji with the decreased attack and the shielding. Got you. I, lo I love I love the frog man, man. But I think he's my second favorite, though. Like I think that Hatasu is God, one of the better epics in the entire game, man. Like I feel people asleep on this champion, you know? Yeah, he's really good. You could use him as your defensive aura, which is great, you know. You could use him. Uh, he's immune to CC debuffs, right? For the on the passive, he's got increased defense and continuous heal on a three turn. He's got AOE decrease attack at a seventy five percent land rate on a three turn cooldown, and then he has the leech. Uh, on the A1, good for the red boss as well. So, like, you know, the only downside is he has, like, a million books. But I think the Hatasu is, like, really, really solid. A lot of players will probably use him if they have him for uh, in Faction Wars. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Taraji, uh, Hatasu, Birinjiri will be yeah. really popular ones uh, for, like, non-legendary options. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Shadowkin don't really have very many good rares. The rares are kind of trash. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't have one that really... They don't have, like, an Apothecary or anything like that that kind of stands out. Uh, so the epics are okay, uh, but they actually did a pretty good job. They have pretty solid legendaries, just kind of a good spectrum of, of roles. The only thing they're missing is like a reviver kind of. Um, but yeah, the legendaries and the epics are decently solid, and then the rares are, are kind of lacking. Yeah, Odachi, I think is how you say his name. I always butcher it. But do you know this dude? <laughs> I, this I am rare not guy? the one to come to for, for uh, correct oh, pronunciation. Oh, man, dude, but... they really, the viewers really let me have it on Odachi. <laughs> Odachi, 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 Odachi. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, so I apologize to all the chosen viewers. I love you guys. I'm not a scumbag. Don't, don't hate me. Uh, but this guy's actually pretty good, man, for a rare. I think he's the best rare they put out last year, which is not saying much at all because they put out barely, really no rares. But, you know, he has a shield uh, on himself with an AoE based on defense. And then he has blocked uh, debuffs for one turn and increased defense, the weak version, on a three turn cooldown. So again, you know, I'm not sitting here saying he's, uh, he's a world beater, but you could do, if you're missing block debuffs, you don't have Lady Kimmy, uh, you don't have an increased defense champion, you could probably take him to five stars, you know? Yeah, he's 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 an above average rare. Uh, they're yeah. just they're just missing like that top fifteen <laughs> rare, like like yeah. a, like a kale or an apothecary or a cold heart or something. But yeah, he's yeah he's all right. Uh, they just need hopefully they'll they'll release a couple more uh, options for the. But like you said, they don't really they do a pretty good job of releasing good epics. I feel like they hit those pretty hard. Um, yeah. they just really leave rares behind. Uh, I, I, they probably want to incentivize people to keep going after epics and legendaries. I would assume. <laughs> I, I think that's the, I think that's the move. I think they, they have, must have had an internal discussion. I don't know what, two years ago or whatever, saying that somewhere after frozen Banshee, they're like, okay, enough of these rares, man. Like no more good rares, you know? Yeah. One battle yeah. pass. We learned our lesson. No more, yeah. no more, <laughs> no more stagnite. We're not going to give you a top five epic in a battle pass. We're not going to give no. you a top five <laughs> rare in a battle pass. Like, nope, we're done with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's end Battle Pass. Uh, and that's what they did. So, yeah, man, I think that we'll, we'll be very curious to see how our teams perform here or how, you know, who are you going with? Who's your real team going to be? My real are you team. Use Yoshi? Uh, uh, my real team will probably be Lady Kimmy Ninja, Yoshi, Taraji. And after that, it's going to. I'll add Genbo if I, if I can get away with it to have more damage. Or, yeah. uh, or I'll add a support if I need it. But yeah, Taraji, and then just my uh, three three legendaries, Lady Kimmy, Ninja, and then Yoshi for like the Aura. And we'll, we'll kind of go from there and see who slots in, if I can add damage or if I need more support. But yeah, that's, I, I'm, not, I'm not as blessed with the, uh, with the Shadowkin legendaries <laughs> as you are, so. Yeah, man, oh, I think you've got enough though to, to, you know, to handle it just fine. So I think you'll be okay, man. Yeah, and I, we'll I should have we'll enough and, and good enough gear to make it work. Awesome, dude. Cool. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's what I wanted to bring you on for. And uh, yeah, anything you want to say on the way out? Thanks for joining me, man.
Uh, it's my pleasure, man. Good luck to all your viewers on Shadowkin uh, Fashion Wars. Uh, I'll be curious to see, you know, how many people struggle trying to get to even level uh, stage 21. I do feel like they let enough time kind of go by. Uh, you know, like I felt like it's been, what, six months, a year almost since Shadowkin has been out. So I think the timing is right. I'm curious to see how many people are going to have challenges, you know, getting to level 21 and clearing it and how that will affect the kind of their Lydia, uh, you know, race or whatever. So, uh, yeah, just kind of curious about what community sentiment is over the next few days. But overall, uh, we'll see. Yeah, they like the dwarves, they they released it a lot sooner. And yeah. they, they put the, the dwarves, they released it within like three months. And then this one, they took like almost a year. So, yeah, yeah. They, they, they did leave a lot more time. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, uh, yeah, we'll see. I guess time will tell. And uh, thanks again for having me, man. Always a pleasure. You bet. Thanks. Take it easy. You too. Alrighty, so that will do it for this one. And like I said in the intro, there's a link down below to Ash's channel. Definitely worth checking out. He puts a lot of fun content over there on his channel. And I hope you enjoyed. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.